go and good day everybody so uh today's episode uh, will feature uh kayla aquilante who is an undergraduate student at the university of Rhode island uh and uh today we are going to get some valuable uh, insights and inf information from Kayla about how to uh, approach the studies uh, in general uh, at the university level uh, and uh, how to, uh, even like more importantly, uh, get success out of those uh, study uh, processes. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, how's it going, Kayla? It's going pretty good. It's almost Christmas. So. Nice. <laughs> excellent so uh yeah uh it's almost christmas so yeah the temperature is kind of like dropped here in rhode island to a uh, very low levels and yeah this is part of the christmas weather uh setup i guess so yeah it's uh, all to the better but um as the uh semester is finishing i think yeah we had already the last day of classes the grades are going to be uh, due quite soon uh but uh, this time is a kind of uh, reflection time i think of the year of the semester for uh many people who uh study uh, or teach uh, as they think about uh, what um, has happened uh, this particular semester so how it has been going and what we can do uh, better in the future so uh, at this time of the year uh, we'll use this uh, particular episode to kind of like uh, share some or like provide to the uh, people some of your reflections uh, about uh, your uh, current status uh, at URI and uh, how it all started. So yeah, basically, let's just uh, start with this one. Uh, how did you uh, get to the uh, URI and uh, uh, why you chose this school and what do you kind of like, like about it? So yeah, any other things that are good to go? Yeah, sure. So back when I was like a junior, senior in high school, I was trying to decide where I wanted to go. And one of the factors that was big for me was that it needed to be decently close to home because I am from Rhode Island and I'm a bit of a homebody. I love coming home. So I needed to choose somewhere that was close to home. And so I looked at a couple different schools in Rhode Island and ultimately I decided to go with your ride because I really liked the campus. I liked that the distance was like just far enough to feel like I'm not home, but close enough to go home whenever I want, which I totally do. Um, and I also liked the opportunities that like I had learned about because URI is a big school and it's funded by the state. There's like a lot of opportunities for research um, and a lot of good per, like connections with professors. And so those were some of like the top reasons why I chose it. And I'm very happy that I went with URI because I honestly can't see myself being anywhere else. Um, I, you know, now that I'm here, I love the professors. I think that they're all like super helpful and they're always willing to just reach out a helping hand. Um, I have been taking advantage of some of the opportunities, so to speak, like next semester, I'm gonna be working on an independent research project with Dr. Cho from the College of Pharmacy. And so, um, yeah, I would say that I'm pretty happy with my decision and I do quite like your eye. <laughs> that is amazing yeah so um, we oftentimes uh, hear how people for example go to let's say stanford or uh, harvard mit whatever it might be kind of like uh, relatively uh, big players on the map right in the country so yeah but yeah it's uh, great to see kind of like how uh, people go to other schools as well and then uh, yeah it's definitely possible to find some kind of like uh, gems like it's like uri right so i think it will <laughs> be overestimation to say that even if it is an overestimation so i'll just gladly say that so yeah because i truly believe uh yet the uri being quite a great uh, place to study all right uh for example and yeah so yeah that's uh, that's uh great uh that you kind of like uh, have uh, this sort of like approach uh, to uh the uh this to this university and uh, i certainly think that uh, it is one of the reasons how you can uh, kind of uh, uh succeed uh, academically so yeah because if you like the place where you for example study or work then uh, yeah you are more likely to have some sort of like good let's say mindset um 
uh, towards it, right? And then you will later on uh, succeed at uh, what you do uh, over there. So yeah, uh, that's that's awesome. That's one of the kind of, I think, pillars for uh, success. Let's put it that way. So, and uh, now, yeah, we can kind of like uh, uh, narrow down kind of like the scope a little bit. So the uh, URI is a university. It means it's kind of like universal in terms of knowledge it can provide, right? As opposed to kind of an institution. So that's at least what I learned from back like in Eastern Europe. So yeah, but uh, still uh, out of uh, many majors at URI, you chose uh, kind of sciences, right? So let's mm -hmm. put it that way, like uh, physical uh, sciences. Uh, so, and then before before then, before you chose, let's say kind of you decided to go to with the like, physical sciences. So did you have any uh, options before then maybe you wanted to let's say become a, like a journalist or uh, a writer so what do you think and then you like chose sciences ultimately yeah so that's that that's out. a very interesting question when I was a kid I used to hate science like so okay. much I, like <laughs> we would have science class and I would literally dread it I hated it so much I just found it so boring um and I used to want to be an artist Mm. actually um I don't I don't know why because I'm really not artistic at all like when I tell you it's it's quite bad I'm not joking um and so I used to want to be an artist and then I had a period where I was like oh maybe I could be an interior designer because I was obsessed with HGTV um then I went through a phase where I wanted to be a chef because I was into Food Network but then once I got to high school and I took biology my freshman year. Um, I started to actually like science. I found it kind of fascinating and like applicable, I suppose, to learn about like the body and my cells and like what they're all doing. And so I think that once I got there and took biology and then in my following years, like chemistry, um, genetics, anatomy, et cetera, I kind of started to like it a lot and realized, oh, I'm kind of good at this. Maybe I should go with something like this. So then around my sophomore year of high school, I started to explore different like careers in science. And I thought, okay, I either want to be a PA, um, which is a physician's associate. They just changed the name to associate. It used to be assistant. Um, or I want to be a pharmacist. And so it was between those two. And so I knew that I needed to select a school that kind of could set me up for either career path, which played a role into, you know, deciding to go to URI. But yeah, as for why I chose the sciences, definitely because I started to, you know, see it as more of something concrete and doable. And I liked it once I hit high school, um, rather than when I was a kid and was just, I don't know, wanting to do everything under the sun <laughs> exactly yeah and that's a great point because uh, if you think about it uh, a person uh can start with some sort of exploration right so yeah the playing field is pretty large in the beginning let's say before you uh, enter the university and then uh specialize or start specializing at some sort of um uh, skill whatever it might be right so and then yeah it was basically uh like what is also important here is that it was uh, your decision that led you uh to science so yeah because in many cases for example somebody like let's say like the parents or the relatives can say well so you must become a lawyer for example right and then mm -hmm. the person becomes a, a lawyer and then uh once they kind of like start to study so they may realize that it is like you know, not necessarily uh, their field of uh, interest and uh, passion, right? So yeah, that's like something that uh, happened to, to some of my relatives. I think they started, let's say, in the actually in the STEM field, right? But then eventually dropped out uh, of uh, such a university, right? Which was uh, about the um, like a STEM STEM field, uh, and then they. Uh, enrolled into something kind of like more humanitarian let's say and then they actually became lawyers and stuff like that so uh yeah that uh, that is one of the kind of like important points that i would like to uh highlight once it comes to uh choosing the majors at the university so i think yeah you need to choose wisely and ideally so if you if your choice is not dictated by somebody else, right? So maybe by some kind of like outer forces. Oh yeah, this seems like a lucrative career field to become, let's say, some sort of like financial analyst, right? And then you just go there because of the money. Then you might not necessarily 
find yourself uh, uh, there as well, kind of like, or find yourself successful in this uh, particular field. But yeah, uh, ideally, if you kind of like operate at the intersection of your uh, passion, right? So what you like to do uh, and um, your ability to further on provide some sort of solutions using your skills, uh, to the like let's say uh people then that's where you're going to be successful with your passion and they may be like monetary outcome right but it's more of the kind of like a further uh, thinking after the university once you get this knowledge right so but before you graduate and then like start uh, becoming kind of like professional maybe like entrepreneur 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 whatever it might be right so you need to get through the uh way of fire basically which is the <laughs> courses right that you are taking so and then yeah for some people it might be kind of like uh, easy right relatively they just uh, do it and then uh, in some other situations um, uh, you might kind of like stay up overnight a lot of times right or maybe kind of like uh, use excessive amounts of caffeine and energy beverages <laughs> and whatever it might be right uh, and like have some sort of like uh, tremendous let's say a mental strain right so yeah when i was in the graduate in the undergraduate program i think i uh, did an overnight period of studies only once <laughs> literally so i really? stayed up at two, uh, 3 45 a.m and that's it or no i woke up at 3 45 a.m and i was doing something up until 10 a.m so but yeah that's <laughs> that's pretty much it i never stayed uh overnight so maybe until like 11 p.m or midnight so, but anyway, so that was my experience. And uh, uh, as you kind of started your studies, so how how has it been going? So you are now in your like, sophomore year, right? Yeah, I just finished uh, sophomore fall. So basically my freshman year, I, would, I won't lie, it was pretty hard. Um, my first semester, I wouldn't say it was hard like academically because I did take some challenging courses in high school so it kind of helped to prepare me okay. but I think it was a hard transition socially because I went from like doing online school with COVID to then moving into a dorm with like hundreds yes. of other girls mm -hmm. like you know trying to make friends in this weird circumstance and so I you know didn't have like the greatest first semester but I don't really think anyone does you know, like now that I will talk about it with my friends and we're all like, yeah, first semester kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say once I got over that hump, second semester was a lot better because I was more like adjusted to everything, kind of like found my people a little bit. Um, and so that was my freshman year. And now I just finished, like I said, sophomore fall. And that was probably, I think it was my favorite semester so far. I am like really adjusted to the campus and to my coursework. And I have like a good group of friends and I have an on-campus job that I've been loving. Um, I'm a tutor for some different science and math courses. Excellent. And so I would say that like, it's going to take some time, but I'm very happy with like how it, how it's ended up going. And so, yeah, I just have next semester, my spring semester, and I think that will be my hardest semester, um, like course wise, mm -hmm. because I'm in the six year pharmacy program. And with that, you have two years of doing like undergraduate prereqs, and then you have your four years of professional coursework. And so next semester will be my last semester before I become a pharmacy student, like officially. And basically, I have to take like some hard classes next semester. I'm in biochemistry, biostatistics, organic chemistry lab, and I'm doing my independent research project. So I think it will be difficult academically. Um, but I hope that if anything, it kind of sets me up for, you know, at least some of the rigor of what pharmacy school is said to be or what everyone makes it out to be. I won't know until I'm there um but yeah that exactly how it's been yeah going. if you have this kind of like earlier exposure i guess to the rigor then you will be better off uh, once kind of like this becomes the actual fact right uh, of your life so uh yeah that's 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 awesome so yeah and then um yeah uh looks like uh, the studies um uh, kind of like uh, were 
difficult, but then, or like the study processes, let's put it that way, were difficult at the beginning, but then they became uh, better, right? So things uh, improved. So, and uh, that kind of like is uh, largely maybe to like your hard work, right? So, but before then, I think something more universal that can be applied to uh, many students, right? At the undergraduate level uh, is, I would say, and I looked it up as I was uh, telling you earlier, this uh, thing, it is, there is the teaching philosophy right that's the official term in in life so but there is no learning philosophy so yeah now we will introduce the learning philosophy <laughs> here maybe the first time in history of the world ever so and then uh, yeah i think like before you start to study something right you need to have some sort of like uh, like philosophical approach to that right just kind of like general uh, mindset yeah. so uh so what, what about it what, what about your learning philosophy when you kind of like study or like before you start some specific uh, subject that you are going to learn yeah I would say my rendition of that is all about mindset you have mm. to have a positive mindset and obviously that's a lot easier said than done I've yeah. had times where I'm super negative on myself, like, oh, I'm not going to do good on this exam, like, this isn't possible, but you do kind of have to consciously override what your brain is telling you, because if you have a more positive outlook and um, more of what they call, like, a growth mindset, then things feel more doable, and so I would say that that's definitely my learning philosophy. And I know that a lot of professors, especially you or I would agree with that because for example, when I took anatomy and physiology one um, freshman spring semester, my professor, Dr. Adams would always talk about how you have to have a growth mindset in order to mm. you know, even be on the path towards success. And I used to hear that and be like, oh, like that's just, I don't know, a bunch of gibberish. But okay. I think that now that it's been a little bit more time, like I definitely see what everyone's talking about because it is true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, the uh, positive mindset, I think, yeah, that's uh, that's a, a big thing over here. Yeah, this is something that we kind of like hear a lot uh, from the maybe like self-improvement uh, literature, right? That's like uh, widely available these days uh, on the internet. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but I think uh, one of the, uh, problems with that uh, is that uh, yeah you might become a kind of like self-improvement uh, junkie as they say so you can just kind of like read all those books and then not actually apply what you mm. kind of like have read from them so that's where maybe I caught myself at right I was reading some books and then do this and that so but then I had a conversation again like via uh, like the video call remotely uh, with my uh, parents right uh, back in Eastern Europe and then they said well so yeah there is so much improvement that you kind of like have learned but now it's kind of like time to apply that actually mm -hmm. so and that's where for me it was a kind of the paradigm shift right so yeah it's good to kind of like read all those uh books and then feel kind of like good about it uh but then you need to actually kind of apply this to yourself and honestly yeah i agree with that so that was uh, not easy maybe you can feel enthusiastic oh yeah i'm going to let's say wake up before 8 a.m uh every day right or maybe like five days a week and then do like 30 minutes of exercise uh every day so yeah but you need to kind of like uh, keep in mind that there will be like the block of sorts like yeah by whatever and says well i'm not gonna do that uh but you need to override it so yeah i think yeah that's that's a very uh important point and uh, yeah you just need to kind of at some point just like force yourself and go with that and then what is yeah. more I, yeah i would just say like definitely overriding to an extent but you do have to realize your limits because i'll try to wake up at like whatever time, 7, 8 a.m. and be like, oh, I'm going to get so much done. I'm going to be so productive. And then I wake up and I'm like an absolute zombie. So you have to be a little bit realistic with yourself. And that's something that I still struggle with because I'll think like I can do all of this stuff. And then when it comes time to do it, I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, there is a, a lot of things that are kind of like present already in the philosophy part of the studies right before you even study uh something and then yeah so you need to like make sure that you have this mindset that you over override 
your maybe some sort of like uh, what's that instincts not instincts but some sort of impulses right so oh yeah mm -hmm. so i will maybe like eat some like extra processed food and then yeah but then you will become kind of like very sluggish next morning and you'll be kind of in this zombie mode or something like that as you were saying right so that's like one of the uh possible outcomes or ramifications of eating the processed food for instance that's that's my case right so uh, and then or maybe you kind of like put too many things on your plate and then yeah so you will become uh kind of like low on energy because energy is going to be like one of the like important currencies basically in the uh, success right you need to have the energy to uh, let's say you read the book right and then take notes and attend lectures and do the homeworks and take exams successfully and so on uh, so yeah uh, the energy and then kind of like knowing the limits i think yeah that's this is an excellent point yeah uh abs absolutely so uh yeah and uh, another thing that's kind of like we wanted to uh talk about so once you get okay well you have the kind of like philosophy all straightened and uh, kind of like delineated the limits uh more or less right and you like left some room for maybe some sort of what's it uh, chaos uh, times let's put it that way right so and then finally it's time to study right so uh what uh, how do you kind of like approach the subject or a course that you study let's say before even it starts let's say the spring semester this time starts hopefully like january 23rd right so well at, at the mm. university of rhode island uh so but now there is like time right and then you have some new courses in the offing and that's going to be kind of the case before like every semester to be honest you'll have some time to think about uh, what's ahead right so how do you kind of like approach that stage so or do you wait until kind of like the classes start or is it already too late so yeah <laughs> yeah i would say i'm generally a pretty like organized uh type a type of folk so i definitely don't wait until it begins but i also don't you know start thinking about it too too early because you do need time to kind of like relax and have an actual break yes so I have like a couple like little goals written out on my calendar of like what I want to accomplish this winter break to prepare myself for spring but I haven't started them yet because I, I just got on break you know and I need to give myself a break um but those goals include like reviewing organic chemistry a little bit because I'm going to be taking the lab and I don't remember most organic chemistry <laughs> Um, looking over um, the software that I'm going to be using for my independent research project and starting to think about what proteins and drugs I would be interested in 3D printing um, with Dr. Cho. Wow. And there's a couple other things, but those are just the ones that come to mind. And then once nice. I actually get access to all my courses online, that's when I make my spreadsheet. And mm -hmm. actually, like a decent amount of college students do this, I've noticed. And I think it's like probably the best tip you could ever do is make a spreadsheet. It's tedious. I won't lie. But um, I just get like all my syllabi together and I put in every homework, every assignment, every this, every that, every due date, every exam and organize it, color code it, put a little checkbox so that when I check it, everything gets grayed out. Uh, you know, I format it all special in Google Sheets and it does take some time, but I like it because it helps me kind of plan like, you know, my week ahead. So as I'm going through the semester, I'm like, okay, this is what I got to do this week. This is what I got to do next week. Here's what I'm going to do day by day. Mm, okay. um, I'm very big on like knowing what I'm doing each and every day. Like, for example, just this past final season, I had got in my iPad because that's what I used to like plan myself out and I looked at my next couple weeks and pretty much planned out every single day of like what I was gonna do and that's excessive it probably is I'm aware but it was kind of becoming a running joke in my family because I told my dad I was like if you ever need to know what I'm doing on you know December 9th just text me and I'll we'll scroll through my iPad and tell you exactly what I'm doing that day but um, yeah, I don't know if people need to do that to that extent necessarily, but I do like having at least like a solid idea of what I'm about to do. So yeah, I would exactly. definitely say like um, the spreadsheet and so that you can plan out your weeks nicely. And also, um, what else do I like? 
I like to, I'm a big fan of a paper calendar. A lot of people use Google Calendar, or Apple Calendar, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. I just don't, uh, I don't like it online. I'm a big fan of like the paper and pencil. And just so things on, on the wall, right? So that type of uh, calendar. Well, I have that type too, but I also just have the one, one like you can bring with you. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Any, the mini thing, right? And it's so like, like a, a planner, planner, I think. Yeah. Yeah. A little planner, but um, I just use like the monthly calendar view and I write out like my work shifts my exams, like big things. So like the little things, the assignments are on my spreadsheet, but then the big things are put onto the calendar as well. So if it's I'm on trying the, to- on the paper it, calendar, right? Specifically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if I'm trying to plan like- That's good, I need if, to- If work is like, hey, can you pick up a shift? I'll be like, hold on, let me reference. I'm like, no, I have an exam Tuesday, so I can't work this uh, weekend. Okay, yeah, but yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm always kind of like on top of what's going on. Um, Yeah. But let me think, do I have any other yeah. tips? Uh, I should probably start walking around with the paper calendar like since kind of the new year is approaching anyway. So I might as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't work for everyone. I know not everyone's a fan of having a paper one. A lot of people do the digital. Um, but I think it's just some sort of calendar or planner in general. Like I have always been such a big fan of them. For yeah, sure. that's right. It kind of makes sense because yeah, you can see the entire month right away. So yeah, if you have... This, yeah uh, pl- planner right or paper calendar yeah which you can like put on the wall for example or if you buy the planner which is large enough then you can also like have all the like 30 something days uh, of a month uh, on the same page yeah literally right <laughs> pun intended and then uh, it's going to be better than when you kind of like watch i use the kind of like apple based uh, calendar so and then i put everything there as well so all the commitments that i need to achieve but yeah so it helps a lot so yeah but at the same time i think uh, also with the calendar just like with anything else you need to kind of like know the limits and then Mm -hmm. yeah i started now being kind of like more careful and then given kind of some sort of like just uh free time right in between like engagements okay so we are recording the episode okay it's going to be let's say 10 to approximately like 11 maybe like 15 or something and then yeah, yeah. I, I was late for this right so that's kind of another way to kind of like think about it that you need to give yourself some uh like extra time for like the uh, maneuvers basically so then it's going to be something from 12 to 2 p.m happening and then, yeah, I cannot start next engagement right at 3 p.m. because I'll be kind of exhausted and then I need to push it a little bit. But yeah, the calendars help. So, and then, yeah, I ultimately started putting lots of things on it from, yes, uh, like science uh, things to training to even, okay, well, now I need to do errands. And then even errands can be uh, on the calendar or groceries. <laughs> but I think maybe that uh, goes into the realm of craziness and over calendaring let's put it that way but still yeah it's helpful and i think as long as you have the balance and then your limits uh you'll be fine so calendars uh, do make a lot of uh, difference and yeah i'll keep in mind to buy like a paper one uh for the for the coming year actually yeah well that's uh great uh so yeah calendars and planning so yeah that's one of the things and then uh when you kind of like uh, study for the course okay so now kind of like the class has started right so and uh, uh wyd basically <laughs> yeah so <laughs> basically is, um i make sure that the spreadsheet is done by like the first week or so of classes and then um my study method apparently it has a term for it i didn't know it had a term for it until i took like I said, anatomy and physiology one in freshman spring semester with Dr. Adams. She had talked about the study cycle and told us to mm-hmm. look it up. I was like, okay, sure. It's so like, um, I think it was published by some university. I forget which one. And basically what the study cycle describes is how before class even happens, you should be looking over the content that'll be covered in class. When class happens, you're taking like little side notes, little annotations, small things like that and being engaged. After class, you're reviewing the content and perhaps translating it into your study method. For me, that would be like a Quizlet. Um, For some people that's like better study guides or notes. And then um, before exams, so like give yourself ample time before exams, not just like the day before, like two days before, give yourself like a week or so, um, depending on the course, of course. Um, 
you're reviewing more. So basically it's just a constant cycle of reviewing content so that it starts to get solidified in your brain. And I didn't know that that had a term until she had mentioned it, but that's something that I've been like subconsciously doing since high school. So I don't know if I'm just ahead of the game or something, but (laughs) (laughs) Um, that's always been my strategy is like, okay, I have, you know, my first organic chem lecture, I'm going to look over the PowerPoint that the professor posted so I'm prepared. I'm going to come to class, have my, um, I use my iPad with the PowerPoint so I can take small margin notes. I don't rewrite everything because I don't think that helps me personally. Um, And then after class, I'm like rereading everything, making sure I understand it all because a lot of content in classes builds on each other. So you have to understand this to get that. So making sure I understand it, translating it into like my quizlets. And then a week before the exam, I'm studying the quizlets, like actual, like sitting down, like making sure that everything makes sense, doing practice problems, um, if applicable for the course, things like that. So I would definitely recommend the study cycle um, because it also helps with, you know, spacing things out so that you're not too overwhelmed. Like, for example, I have some friends that they, they like to cram it all and study like the night or two before, which works for some people. I get it. I just think for me, I get so overwhelmed if I do that, um, that I just can't do it all the night before. Like I won't remember it all. And like, I need my sleep. I'm a big fan of, you know, I don't really pull all nighters because of the study cycle. Like I have everything spaced out nicely with time. So I don't have to stay up all night and like, you know, be super tired when I go to sit for an exam or, you know, not quite remember everything that I needed to know for it. And I don't know if that's going to change in the future when courses get harder. Maybe it will. We'll see. Um, But that's definitely my tip as of right now, given the classes that I've taken as an undergrad. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's great. Uh, So, yeah, I think I particularly like this kind of like early early approach early stage approach because uh, for the classes at which I was most successful as an undergraduate student uh, I think there was one hard class coming up in the like spring semester of a particular year but then uh, when I knew well, what kind of like book for example we were going to use I went to the library right away and I read the book approximately like a month before the classes started so and i had this kind of like general outline of the knowledge so maybe i did some kind of like sample problems for example for this particular class and then yeah it was one of my most uh, successful uh classes uh, basically nice. so even if everybody was saying oh yeah it's going to be like so hard and then uh you just kind of like genetically are not uh, going to be successful in this class something like that so yeah but eventually kind of it was possible and then i succeeded kind of like very nicely it was not like a 100 success because it was like a very hard class but then yeah. still i got uh, like a solid a so i think yeah. their a started at 85 percent and yeah, if you get 85%, you still get an A, right? So, but if you get, for example, like uh, 95%, then you still get an A, but it will translate to more money that you receive uh, as your stipend as an undergraduate. So yeah, I didn't pay anything. So I was getting paid <laughs> like a little oh, stipend. Okay, okay. So, yeah. I was like, wait, what? You were getting paid? <laughs> several dollars a month. So enough to like buy tickets soon, for example, for or like a metro, not the metro, but the subway subway pass and then the like um, trolley bus pass and then maybe go to the i don't know to the to the to the restaurant once a month so yeah Yeah. it was like very minor (laughs) so yeah but somebody was oh yeah i'm gonna get uh, not hundred dollars a month but 125 (laughs) better than you because i got like 90 percent out of not 85 and then i got a better a than you so yeah, that's just like some uh, flashback. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so uh, yeah, then there was another thing that uh, I think you were talking about that it is kind of the uh, limits and uh, like realistic goals. Uh, what about the realistic goals that you kind of like try to uh, set? Yeah, so I think that comes up in a couple of ways. One of them being if I have, you know, my week planned out, And I'm looking like, okay, I'm going to do this, this day, this, that day. I then have to assess like, how long is everything going to take me? Am I really going to have the energy to do all this? Mm -hmm. Um, Am I even going to have the time to do all this? Like, did I 
you know, schedule in almost like, you know, breaks for having lunch, having dinner, because sometimes I notice um, some of my friends, like they'll pack their schedules so much that they yes. don't even really have time to eat dinner. And you do need to, you know, take care of basic body functions, even though sometimes uh, it can almost feel difficult to when you're super overwhelmed with work. Exactly. So that's one of the ways that I think it manifests itself. Um, and another would be um, probably like overall thoughts about a class. So when I took organic chemistry one, um, saw I took it freshman spring at URI, I was very nervous to take it because I heard it was a really hard class. And I was like, oh my God, like this is going to ruin my GPA. Like, oh my God, like I'm going to do so bad. And so I really spent a lot of time on that class to ensure that I could do, you know, well. And I would get a little bummed out if like I wasn't doing exactly how I wanted to. But I remember one day I was talking to my dad about it and he was telling me like, it's okay if you don't always get like the perfect grade. It's okay if, you know, you get a grade that's like below like what you would want to, because if you're doing your best, then that's all that you can, that's all that you can put forth. And that's something that I think is like important to hear, um, no matter like what grade range you're shooting for in college with a class, yeah. just like, just do your best. And hopefully that'll correlate with, you know, the grade that you want. But if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Like the, the world will still spin tomorrow. The sun will still rise. Like, it'll be okay. Like you're, you're not going to die. And I know that that sounds so exaggerative, but, um, it's true though, because I, I have, you know, in my experience and in my friend's experience as well, like you'll put so much work into a class that you'll, you know, you'll get so invested in it. And then if it doesn't come out, you know, with the grade that you wanted, it just feels like such a defeat, but you do have to remind yourself, like, listen, like I did my best, you know, there's only so much I can do. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm a human. Like, you know, I can't, I can't always um, have perfection coming out of my, my work. So I would say that the idea of setting the realistic goals comes into play really in those aspects. And then thirdly, when you're studying, because some people can pull all-nighters. It seems like for us, we're not really the type of people to do that. Um, so I think you kind of have to understand, like, maybe this person's really good at doing that, but I'm not. And that's okay. We can have different strategies. And so kind of understanding that everyone's different, um, you know, in that regard. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, the setting of the realistic goals is um, like a very valuable thing. And, yeah, sometimes... Yeah, it's kind of like important maybe to, as you were saying, if I were to paraphrase, sort of like uh, disconnect and have like a larger view of what's happening. It's not only kind of like, it's not like the life is all about a particular class and then getting uh, like the best possible score at this. So there are also some kind of other things that uh, come to the fore, right? Especially as you progress in life. So like life becomes, looks like only more complex <laughs> as you uh, go further, right? So yeah, because... Yeah, first you just go to school, right? Uh, then you go to the university and then you need to, let's say, uh, live with the housemates, for example, right? So that's just kind of like one instance about kind of like the balancing uh, of the or setting the realistic goals. Yeah, you need to study. And now you also need to take out the recyclables and trash, for example. And let's say the <laughs> housemates are not particularly good about doing that, right? So, and uh, they just kind of, let's say, uh, don't uh, do their uh, duties, for example. So yeah, once like uh, I was living in one house and then, yeah, I had to study at the graduate school. And then, yeah, so there was kind of like the uh, like schedule of duties. Who does what? Like every week we change, right? So like one week, uh, let's say I wash the floors, then the next week, the other person washes the floors. And then yeah. what was happening is like not every, like not every other week that person was like doing his part of the uh, house duties. And then I had to do that. So otherwise there would be kind of a problem with the like landlord and then she was particularly strict about those duties, right? Or maybe there was some kind of like uh, trash in the kitchen, right? Not taken out or somebody spilled something. So and then she was also kind of like very critical uh, about that. 
uh, and so on and so on, right? So this is just like one example. And then another example could be just, oh yeah, maybe you just need to pay for your vehicle, right? For example, which you bought and now you need to kind of make sure that you stay on top of those kind of like payments and so on. So yeah, that's why the realistic goals like will uh, be very important there. And then, yeah, so you might succeed like tremendously in some sort of course, but what if let's say other life processes fail, it's not going to be also like optimal, right? So recyclables are not taken out. And then there is like some sort of spillage in the kitchen and uh, the dog ran away. So yeah, things like that. So we might imagine like many, many uh, ramifications of like setting unrealistic goals. Um, yeah, that's uh, awesome. So I think on uh, our list, so what what else uh, did we have? Ah, yeah. Uh, so the uh, kind of proverbial time management. Yeah. So I think that's going to be kind of another thing to highlight. So yeah. What about time management? So how do you kind of like uh, manage it uh, when you approach the study of like courses? I think it's different for everyone in terms of like what your limits are. I'm personally the type of person that if I have, you know, like um, just a little bit of downtime in between classes or I finish lunch early and I have 30 minutes before my class, I'm the type of person that will use that time to do to do something relating to school or something that has to get done. Like I won't use that time leisurely. And at times you do need to use it leisurely because you do need a break and that's totally okay. But generally speaking, if I have any downtime, I'm using it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that helps a lot because you don't realize it, but the little amounts of time do build quite a bit. And so yes. it can be difficult when I'm looking at my day and I have a lot to do. I have a lot of lectures to attend. I have meetings and I have, you know, tutoring shifts, or perhaps um, I work at Walgreens as well as a pharmacy technician. So perhaps I have a exactly. Walgreens shift later. It can be difficult to be like, how am I going to get this all done? But when you have those little pockets and you're using them, it does add up quite a bit. Mm. So I would say that's definitely my favorite tip. Mm. Um, and then aside from that, I would say learning how to like work efficiently okay. or like study efficiently. Because when you, when I started, I think like, I would say like my freshman year. Yeah. When I started to like study for like college exams, it would take me like a really long time. And I wouldn't say it doesn't take me a really long time now. It still takes me a decent bit of time because I'm really thorough. Um, that's just how I am. But I would say that you just have to um, kind of get comfortable with things and learn like with time, sort of like better strategies for yourself that can try to chalk down on how much time you're spending to do tasks. So I would say that those are like two important things for managing time. Yeah, well, that's uh, awesome. Um, yeah, so yeah, there are like multiple approaches again to the time management. But uh, yeah, in my case, I think I would just allocate some on uh, chunks of time when I do focused work, for example, right? Let's say it's like 45 minutes of the focused work and then I am not distracted by the phone, for example, or I don't answer emails. I just uh, do the grading, for example. That's going to be my ultimate <laughs> goal before the kind of like grades are due. So I just need to grade leftover exams, uh, basically. And then I'll just be calculating grades in the spreadsheets and publishing them, right? So, but for that purpose, most likely I'll just be allocating uh, like scheduled uh, times so or like focused uh, times of work 45 minutes and then 15 minute break right mm -hmm. so yeah that's kind of like one thing to go about that but again so that's going to be more like a pomodoro method but your method yeah. is different you're trying to take advantage of the kind of like scattered small periods of time like like 15 minutes or half an hour and then you kind of like study uh in this case for the lecture so that's that's a nice yeah, strategy. So, yeah. i didn't think about yeah. it so, but... for some people that pomodoro method works i find for me it doesn't really i'm the type of person that i can go for like a few hours at a time to get something done and then take you know a 30 minute or like however long of a break it doesn't oh. work like that for some people for some people they need more um frequent breaks that are shorter but I find for me that that ends up messing with my flow and then I can't get as much done. So I think kind of like you got to test out both and see what kind of works. 
exactly yeah and it's all about experimentation so uh and uh, for the successful exper experimentation we now have uh, quite a set of methods actually so thank you so much for sharing them um with uh, the people so i'm sure they will find it uh, helpful and applicable so well friends the study process is not an easy one but it is uh, totally conquerable and uh, doable as long as um, you have the tools and you have them so you just need to kind of like learn them and apply them see what works what doesn't and uh, optimize and experiment further until success is achieved and it's going to be there all right great uh, so well uh thank you so much uh, kayla for again joining us <laughs> today thank and you. sharing your wisdom and knowledge that was awesome so yeah uh i think that at some point uh, we will regather kind of at the actual studio so which i finally was able to use this week but of course when I started recording, uh, they started drilling on the next floors. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just how this goes. But yeah, we'll see how the audio kind of like came out after this drilling <laughs> um, intrusion. But yeah, it's okay. So, and uh, yeah, so please subscribe to our channel. So that's the usual call right here. Uh, and follow us on YouTube and we'll continue bringing more wisdom to your life. Um, uh, once the life is hacked all right so um anyway so thank you and uh, bye everyone bye <laughs>